JFT, just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's daily market review for August uh, the 31st. I am Harlambos Pissuros, head of research here at JFD, and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events, and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded mixed against the other major currencies on Monday and during the Asian session Tuesday. It gained only versus CHF and JPY, while it, under, while it underperformed against uh, NZD and CAT. The greenback was found nearly unchanged within a plus uh, minus 0.10% uh, range against uh, the euro, the pound and the Aussie. The weakening of the safe havens yen and franc, combined with the strengthening of the commodity-linked Kiwi and Luni, suggests that markets traded in a risk-on manner yesterday and today in Asia. European shares traded slightly higher or unchanged uh, from their opening levels, as a UK holiday may have resulted in a subdued uh, trading activity. However, later, during the US uh, session, market appetite was boosted further with, uh, the, with the S&P 500 and uh, the Nasdaq hitting fresh uh, record highs, although Dow Jones slid uh, somewhat. As for today in Asia, sentiment remained uh, supported. Now, the driver behind the new records in the S&P 500 and uh, Nasdaq may have been the cautious uh, remarks uh, by Fed Chair Powell on Friday at uh, the Fed's uh, Jackson Hole Symposium. The committee's head acknowledged the progress of the US economy towards their objectives, but refrained from providing clear signals with regards to when they may begin tapering their quantitative easing purchases. He added that he wants to avoid chasing uh, transitory inflation and potentially discouraging jobs uh, growth in the process. This gave the green light to investors uh, to buy more stocks as a delayed and slower process could mean later uh, rate hikes as well, and thereby uh, low borrowing costs uh, for companies for longer. Uh, lower interest rates uh, also mean higher present values for uh, companies, the valuation of which is based on discounted expected future cash flows. Now, that said, market participants are likely to get more careful as we get closer to Friday's US jobs data for August. Expectations are for another strong report, which may raise uh, the volume of the hawkish uh, voices among the FOMC, something that uh, may result in a, a, majority, uh, a majority vote in favor of uh, tapering sooner than Powell thinks. Therefore, a decent employment uh, report on Friday may be the catalyst for a rebound in the US dollar, which came under selling interest following Powell's uh, Jackson Hole remarks. Equities could pull back, but we don't expect a major trend reversal as improving data also mean better economic recovery, which is encouraging for equity traders. Now, as for today, the main item on the agenda may be Eurozone's uh, CPIs uh, for August. The headline rate is expected to, to have moved further above the 2% mark. Specifically, it is expected to have risen to 2.8% year over year from 2.2%. The HICP excluding energy and food rate is also expected to have risen, but to have stayed below 2%. The forecast is for a, ri for a rise to 1.4% year over year from 0.9%. At its latest gathering, the ECB kept all of its uh, settings unchanged, but changed its forward guidance, saying that it will keep interest rates at present or lower levels until it sees inflation reaching 2% well ahead of the end of uh, its projection horizon which may also imply a period during which inflation mo moderately overshoots uh, that objective. 
In our view, this translates into willingness to hold rates low for much longer than uh, the previous uh, guidance suggested. Yes, accelerating inflation could bring forth the hike timing, but bearing in mind that the preliminary euro area PMIs for August slid uh, by more than anticipated, and also that underlying inflation is still expected to stay below, to stay decently below 2%, we don't expect ECB officials to change their minds with regards to their future uh, policy plans. On the contrary, with ECB pledged to stay accommodative for long, we see the case for the euro to stay under pressure against currencies, the central, the central banks of which are expected to start normalizing their respective uh, policies soon. The likes of the Kiwi and conditional upon a strong NFP report on Friday, perhaps the US dollar. Now, as for the rest of uh, today's events, Germany's unemployment rate for August is coming out and the forecast uh, points to a down tick to 5.6% from 5.7%. Later in the day, we have Canada's GDP for the second quarter and for the month of June. The quarter over quarter annualized rate is expected to have slid to 2.5% from 5.6%. But the monthly rate for June is expected to have risen to 0.7% from minus 0.3%. At its prior gathering, the Bank of Canada appeared less hoggish than expected, saying that they continue to see the output gap closing, closing in the second half of 2022, which suggests that uh, their expectations over when they may start raising interest rates have not come forth. What's more, both headline and core Canadian inflation rates um, uh, for... <coughs> Excuse me. Both the headline and, and core Canadian inflation rates for July declined, while the employment report for the month fell uh, short of its own forecast, which may have added credence to the Bank of Canada's view. However, the Canadian dollar enjoyed, uh, enjoyed decent gains in the last uh, 10 days, perhaps driven by the rebound in oil prices. So we believe that the currency is likely to stay linked mainly uh, to that instead of uh, data releases. From the US, we get the conference uh, board consumer sentiment index for August, which is forecast to have slid to 124 from 129.1. So that's it uh, for me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested uh, in uh, learning about uh, the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.